Meet Georgia. Georgia loves playing with other dogs. However, she tends to come on too strong. Not all dogs react kindly to an overly exuberant greeting. We want to teach Georgia to greet dogs more calmly. This is Georgia's first time meeting Jack, and she's very excited. We don't want her rushing up to Jack in this overly excited state. This behavior might frighten some dogs. Other dogs might find it rude and may not tolerate it. Jack is friendly and interested, but rules are rules. Jason reels Georgia in and helps her to calm down by asking her to sit beside him. Once she is calm, they will begin moving closer to Jack. He discourages barking, lunging, and jumping behaviors by halting all forward movement toward Jack. When Georgia calms down, she gets to move a little closer. When she barks or lunges toward Jack, she stops moving forward. Georgia is barking out of frustration because she wants to meet Jack and doesn't yet understand why Jason isn't allowing this. Meanwhile, Jack is setting a good example by modeling calm, relaxed behaviors. Jack remains focused on Sharon with his back to Georgia. This is often described as a calming or appeasement signal. And now for the final approach. Georgia's energy level is still pretty high, but Jack doesn't mind in the least. Appropriate circling, nose to tail. But before things get a chance to get too exciting again, Jason and Sharon separate the dogs. Then Georgia will practice her polite approach again. First, she needs to settle down again. Jason has her sit. It is helpful to start practicing polite greetings with a calm dog like Jack. If the other dog were also overly excited, this lesson would take a lot longer for Georgia to learn. Georgia puts her nose to the ground and starts sniffing. In dog language, this is polite and appropriate. The barking, not so much. Scratching is a stress signal. It is a lot of work for Georgia to be calm, and she's letting us know that this is difficult for her. An appropriate nose to the ground approach. More sniffing and less lunging, progress. This time Georgia takes a curved path instead of a head-on approach. Excellent, this greeting was much more calm. Towards him that time instead of just going straight for him. Sniff in the ground like she's showing the appropriate signals here. Georgia approaches again. Back her off as she's barking. Yeah. Georgia is able to stop fixating on Jack and displays appropriate body language instead. That's very nice. Again, she takes very a curved nice. path toward Good. Jack. This is much more appropriate. Jack is more than ready to engage with her. Look at how Georgia and Jack move their tails. Their tails are neither too high nor too low and are calmly wagging. Now, Georgia and Jack get a chance to mingle in a fenced-in yard. They are still leashed, just in case we need to safely separate them. They are coexisting calmly and peacefully. This is exactly what we would like to see. Dogs are not humans, and their social interactions are different from ours. Ignoring each other is not the least bit impolite. Quite the opposite, actually. Hi, everybody. This is a wonderful example of two socially appropriate adult dogs calmly sharing space with one another. Right. Now they're ready to get rowdy. Super appropriate play behavior. Appropriate play behavior is like a dance. The dogs mirror each other's behavior and take cues from one another. There's a play bow. Another play bow. Good play bow.
Now Georgia is going to practice meeting a different dog. Her initial on-leash greeting still needs work. The other dog is Buck. He is used to doing this kind of work. Jason allows Georgia to move closer when she is calm. If she pulls on the leash, Jason stops moving forward, just like when Georgia met Jack. Having consistent expectations will help Georgia to learn that polite greetings apply to every dog she meets. Georgia puts her nose to the ground. In dog language, sniffing the ground communicates conflict avoidance. It is a calming or appeasement signal. Depending on the context, sniffing could also be considered a sign of anxiety. Buck's tail wags just a little bit as Georgia approaches, and he models appropriate behavior. Georgia is still showing a little frustration. She looks up at Jason, and he allows her to approach. That approach was too fast and direct. Let's try that again. Now Georgia takes a long, curved path over to Buck. She greets him nose to tail instead of nose to nose. Excellent. Jason calls her back to him before things get too exciting. We want Georgia to interact with Buck in a calm state right now. Buck would like to meet Georgia next. Georgia turns around and comes nose to nose with Buck. This is a canine communication faux pas. Buck reacts to this by stiffening and turning his head away slightly. He's telling her that he is uncomfortable and wants her to calm down. Nose to tail is more appropriate. Buck is much more receptive to interacting with Georgia when she does this. Notice that Jason and I are keeping our leashes loose whenever it is possible to do so. We dance around the dogs to make sure the leashes don't get tangled. Getting tangled up with an unfamiliar dog can cause a lot of tension, and that wouldn't be helpful to Georgia. Georgia practices being approached. She is unconcerned and goes walking off. Buck follows her, sniffing her trail. A dog's sense of smell is tens of thousands of times stronger than ours. Sniffing where another dog has been is not only appropriate, but informative. Dogs will shake to relieve stress. Georgia has been working very hard to make a good impression, and she is letting us know that this wasn't easy. Time to give Georgia a break. Jason and I separate the dogs. Georgia changes her mind. She approaches Buck nose to nose. Oops. Watch Buck's body language. Buck turns his head away. He is trying to politely diffuse this awkward greeting. Georgia backs off. No hard feelings. Good girl, Georgia. Georgia meets Onyx next. He is feistier than Jack and Buck and has been known to correct other dogs for rude social behavior. I ask Onyx to calm down because he needs to model good behavior and not egg Georgia on. Polite greetings apply to every dog you meet. Georgia will not be able to move closer to Onyx until she is showing calm behaviors. Good girl, Georgia. Georgia is patient while Jason untangles her. And then she yawns, a stress signal. Georgia attempts a direct approach. Jason interrupts her. Georgia makes an excellent decision. She puts her nose to the ground and moves away. Another excellent decision. Georgia approaches Onyx with her nose down and takes a curved path to his tail. They circle around, nose to tail. We keep the leashes loose. Onyx decides to take a break and move away. Georgia imitates his appropriate behavior. Onyx marks and Georgia trails behind, sniffing where Onyx has been. Georgia likes Onyx. She starts getting bouncy. Onyx is not ready to play yet, so I call Georgia away. Meeting someone for the first time can cause stress and anxiety, so giving the dogs a break now and then is a good idea. This approach is so polite, it barely looks like an approach. Georgia has had about enough of these pleasantries. 
but Onyx still refuses to engage. He is asking her to slow down. Onyx plays it cool. Georgia burns off some pent-up frustration by rolling in the grass. Yes, this is another stress signal. This time, Georgia will be approached by Onyx. Onyx gives a lot of signals that he'd really rather not. Georgia isn't exactly playing hard to get. Onyx nips the air in Georgia's direction. He is making it unmistakably clear that he wants Georgia to back off. Georgia is riled up now. She needs to calm down or Onyx will deliver another correction. Well, that was rude. <laughs> Georgia is convinced that Onyx is a lot of fun and she is just dying to play. I drop the leash. Onyx is free to interact or move away. Oh dear. Georgia ignores Onyx's signals and pounces on him. This was mostly a lot of noise, but it got Georgia's attention. Onyx snarled and lunged, and Georgia immediately rolled over, exposing her belly. This means, I'm sorry. Georgia's play bow communicates to Onyx that she just wants to play. Let's watch that again. Georgia is still bouncy. But now she's bouncing around him, not on him. Meanwhile, Onyx has chosen to move away, far away. At this point, I think that Onyx would probably be receptive to playing with Georgia under different circumstances. We decide to bring them to the indoor play area. Onyx knows that this is an appropriate place to play, and he loosens up. Don't you just love when a story has a happy ending? <laughs>